the, the main message I want you to walk away with thinking about um, what's going on is we are entering the age of innovation, I'll call it. Um, it's kind of like when, when the Italian Renaissance started and the Medici's brought everyone together and this explosion of ideas. And I think there's several things that are, are making that happen right now. I think there's three main ones. Um, one is the, uh, is, the, is the price of technology. Um, that's the magic that, that makes things possible. And, uh, and you can't really, you got to stop thinking about it as someone else's tool, uh, technology. It's, it's so easy to use and it's for everyday things. It's not some big processor that runs a big computer. We're talking about little computers that, that, that you know, would fit on the end of a pencil that cost 50 cents that are the same as, you know, computers this big that you would buy, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so, and I think it's mostly driven, as you probably already know, by, by this. So someone asked me, you know, I want to get into technology, where should I start? I said, well, just study this. If 80% all, if of everything you did just studied what's inside this and tracked those components and the software and the business models, you'd probably be as smart as you ever need to be to do all the products you need to do. So this is the big mover right now. These outnumber people in, in, in many countries, and the price is just, just coming down on these parts because they're making you know, hundreds of millions of these parts. So um, that's one. That was the same with, with, with Furby uh, and with Clio. In, in Furby, we had a 30-cent processor and another 10-cent part. I think it was $5 altogether, and we did all this amazing stuff. And, and it's how you leverage that technology that actually you know, makes it show. You can put a great processor in something, but if you don't know how to show off with that. So that's why toys were great, because we could make them entertaining. You could show off, you know, what they could do. The second thing, I think, uh, so technology is coming down, so it's more available for everybody, and the prices are easy to work with. The next thing is um, additive manufacturing. So that's the SLA, the rapid prototyping. Uh, I can get a product done in a week where it would take me four months, five months to do. We can make, so if you go upstairs at the end of this tour, and you look in their room up there, uh, they're one of the least expensive shops in, in, in the nation right now. I can get stuff made so inexpensively up there. So if you have a housing or a park or a gearbox or, or any kind of a prototype, you can engineer it and build it you know, in under a week. It, it's a, an, an incredibly low prices. You'll have a, a working physical model to be able to show people. Um, the last thing is kind of what I'm calling the democratization of, of ideas, which is Kickstarter. So um, how many of you have heard of Kickstarter? Okay, all those that didn't raise your hand, you can just, just, just leave. No, I'm, I'm not that <laughs> Okay, no. So, yeah, I wanted to say that what you need to do is if you, if you come across a word you don't know, write it down and Google it later. Kickstarter, if you don't know about that, that will change your whole idea of how to bring a product to market. Um, John is uh, launching something in a week on Kickstarter. Um, basically what it is, it's a social media site where you put up your idea, whatever it is. It could be just a piece of paper or a prototype or a video. And then people uh, invest in it, but that investment is not money you ever pay back. You guarantee them, like, if I make one of these, I will, uh, I'll give you one, one of the first ones that we make. But it's really kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's this amazing thing, and millions of people look at it every day. So no longer do you have to go to a VC and raise all this money to get it in front of people. You can get something in front of people in a week, and, and they can see it, and they can start to vote on it. And, John, what's the, what's the big number they've raised on one project? What are some numbers they've raised? 10 million. So people they were raised, asking for 100,000 and they raised 10 million. Right, and so that's, and how long did it take them to raise 10 million bucks? Yep. How long do you think it took them to raise that much? A month. A month. I mean, most of it happened. So a $50,000 range, a $100,000 range, all these are, are very doable now. And what's happened is you take this powerful engine of social media and the internet and you apply it to early adopters, people that want to see tech happen and they want to be one of the first people in. What it's really turned into is a front page for the VCs. It's the front page. It's there. It's where it's like the investment daily of all the new ideas on the planet. And so what happens is if you launch something there, you've got the attention of these people and you really have spent very little. So the, actually a lot of the investors are really pissed off because it, you're cutting off a big piece of the middleman. So. Those three things, so you've got to look up additive manufacturing. If you don't know that, probably most of you do. You want, to, um, you want to look into, well, you'll see a lot of technologies here that have brought the price down and make things available to you, and then, um, and then Kickstarter and things like Kickstarter that, that are bloomed up. So let me just give you a couple quick examples of what we're talking about uh, in products. So um, uh, this morning, Derek and I are sitting around. We said, well, let's, give, let's think of some examples of what these parts can do for you uh, in terms of product innovation. So. Um, Let's say you're looking at a, you're at a, you're at a convention somewhere and you see all these uh, house fans. And they're just, just blowing around, right? 
And so, uh, gee, how could I make that house fan smarter? What you do is you think about what, what's it really supposed to be doing? Like in the future, what will that fan be doing? Well, it should know where the heat is, right? Maybe it, it, it turns where the heat is. It chases the heat out of the room. What would that take? Derek, what do you think that takes? Uh, what kind of sensor do you think would look for the heat? Well, you could use um, an infrared sensor. An infrared like sensor. Infrared sensor, which really detects heat and motion. That's and, and how much is that part? Oh, sub five cents. Okay, that's less than a nickel. You, let's say you put a processor in there, and that's you can, and you can spend as little as... Uh, let's say 13 cents. You can spend 13 cents on a microcontroller, and uh, you're using their motor and battery. So un, under for probably under two bucks you know, way under two bucks, you can have a solution for this fan company that when you hold up a candle, it follows you around. And, it, and imagine that at a trade show and how that changes that whole business. Let's say we are thinking of another one. Let's say you want to do something with shoes. Now, a lot of people think about shoes. So you put a button cell in there that, uh, that lasts about five years because uh, these all the circuits draw like nano amps now. And let's say you put uh, an accelerometer uh, in there, and that's like 50 cents. And let's say you put a, um, a little emitter so it can send out data. Now that thing's going to last longer than your shoe, and it's going to be able to tell your iPhone uh, exactly how far you've gone, how many times you've worn this shoe. Any data you want about the shoe can show up on your phone. That, that's interesting. That's probably, we added it up, it'd be about $3,500 between you buying a handful of parts, getting like two days of programming time, and, and making it something that goes in a shoe, right? So why aren't those products around? Why aren't, why aren't we, it's because You've got to use both sides of your brain here. And that's, you know, the school and Eagle that, that, I, that I'm helping run. It's you have to know the technology and you've got to know what people need. Now, I think the most successful people will not be technologists because they're studying the parts. You need to look at what people need. You have to look at what, you know, if you look at a coffee cup and you think of something in the future, what should that coffee cup do? What's, you know, in, in, in Star Wars, it never spills. It knows if it's hot or cold. It, it, you know, just make a list of the things that that thing is supposed to do, that you would really want, what would be a perfect magical version? If Disney did a coffee cup, what would it do? And those are the things that you, that, that you know people want. Those are like the aspirational things that people want. And you backtrack and you ask someone like Derek or me or John, and you find the technologies that do that. So I'm going uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shut up. If there's any kind of questions you guys want, just stop us in the middle and ask that question, or we can wait to the end. But I, I want to make this free-flowing. and. And so you're not getting all anxious. So the first up is going to be John Sosoka, who is the CTO of Yugobi. He started a toy company, whatever award there was. He, he does hardware, software, AI. He's launching something on Kickstarter.